Hey everybody, welcome back, Alex here. Today we're doing three web developer tests, not three web developers, more like three different tests to test your browser and the different web development technologies that are available that live inside the browser. We're gonna be doing Speedometer, pretty common one, I'm sure you've seen that. We're gonna be doing Jetstream 2 and we're gonna be doing Motion Mark. And I got two machines to do this test on. You might've seen my channel before. I've already done the MacBook Air, I've done the Intel MacBook Pro, and I've done the MacBook Pros that just came out recently with the M1 Max chip and the M1 Pro chip. If you missed those tests, I'll link to them down below. But today we've got the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip, 48 core GPU, and 64 gigs of RAM. Big power in a small package on my desk here. It's running in a nice 12 watts uh, sitting there idling and I'm running it against this beast right over here, which is the Alienware Aurora, 32 gigs of RAM. It's got an Intel Core i9, 12th generation, Alder Lake chip in there. It's the 12900KF. I'll put the stuff in the description. It also has an NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti in there, but I'll do those tests separately, the machine learning test. Today is just web. It's web today. So we're gonna kick things off with speedometer. Now I'm pretty excited about this because I actually have not done any tests on the Alder Lake machine yet. So I'm really, really curious to see what the scores will be here. All right, let's begin. And they're off to the races. As typically happens, there's gonna be a lot of flashing going on, which is gonna give me a headache shortly. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with what this test does, it's basically a browser benchmark. It measures the responsiveness of web applications built in JavaScript. So it's got a bunch of to-do applications written in React, Angular, Vue, and so on, even pure JavaScript. And it runs through adding and removing to do items really, really fast. So just a JavaScript test and we have our results. That was insanely fast for both of these machines and it's super, super close. Check it out. We've got 303, which is the highest score I've ever seen. And that's coming from the Intel machine. Pretty impressive. 298 is still a really, really nice high score. It's the second highest score I've ever seen. And that's coming from the Mac Studio. Wow, both of these are neck and neck. I think I might just have to run this one more time because this is way too close and I can't believe how excited I sound, which is kind of ridiculous and crazy, but um, let's just do it again. All right, that's uh, not giving me a headache yet. I'm staying strong for you folks, but it's probably almost done. Wow, okay, now we've got the highest score. <laughs> we've got two more highest scores, 304 on the Intel machine and 301 on the Mac Studio. Now 301 is the highest score that I've seen on any Apple Silicon machine up to now, so not bad. I imagine if I start this test a few more times, it'll just keep improving, but you know what? Let's do it one more time because why not? Okay, okay. I have the highest score that I've ever seen, including the two previous tests, 307 on the Intel machine, but we went down a little bit to 297 on the Mac Studio. Sorry, Mac Studio fans. Okay, let's move on. By the way, notice that the scale only goes up to 140. I think they should update the scale at this point. Here are the detailed breakdowns of each iteration, by the way, just for your reference. This is the Intel machine, and now this is the Mac machine. You can pause the video if you wanna check that out closer. Okay, now if I just leave that here, I know some of you will not be satisfied and you will leave me a comment saying, well, why didn't you run Safari on the Mac? And why didn't you run Edge on Windows? So for you folks, here are the scores. Surprisingly, Safari got 286. I ran this several times already, by the way. And Edge got 287. <laughs> so we've got the native browsers actually doing worse than Chrome. This wasn't the case in the last generation, but for some reason, it's the case now. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Jetstream 2, and that test does take a little bit longer to run, so I'm just gonna kick things off and start the test right now. There we go. Now, why am I doing this test also? Because this test has something that Speedometer doesn't have, and that's WebAssembly, which is becoming more and more popular to use on the web. Blazor uses WebAssembly under the hood, if you're familiar with that. So Jetstream 2 does include JavaScript tests, as well as WebAssembly tests, which is a pretty cool test. I recommend you go and check it out. Do it right now. No, don't do it right now, do it after the video. But what's interesting is if you go to browserbench.org and check out the in-depth analysis, you can read about all the different tests that they include there. Pretty interesting read if you're into geeky stuff like that. Okay. We have a significant difference in the score this time around. 264 for the Intel machine and 211 
for the Mac Studio. Now I know that, you know, usually we, uh, we have the Mac win on this channel, so I'm feeling a little bit nervous. The Intel is really kicking some serious butt here. Also, I'm seeing that the Mac is only using 11 watts of power during this whole time, and the PC is using 57 watts of power to 59. So the Mac will actually um, save you money in the long run in electricity costs. No? Okay. <laughs> hey, it's a bonus, it's a benefit, right? Everybody's talking about the power consumption. Now, as a side note, Power consumption matters a lot, I think, in a MacBook or a laptop. But when it comes to desktop machines, it's not like you're gonna be draining the battery or anything. So yes, it's better for the environment to use less power, but it's not gonna affect your ability to do work if you have a machine that draws more power. Okay, I'm gonna do this one more time because that's what we did for the other one. But before I do, I just wanna roll through the results here so you can take a look at what it does and here are the Jetstream result scores for the first run on the Mac Studio. There's the TypeScript score right there, and it even does an ML score. Let's see what that is. It's an implementation of a feed-forward neural network. It trains several networks using activation functions. So it's doing some ML in the browser. Impressive. Here are the results on the Intel machine. I'll just scroll this down a little bit. ML got a much higher score, 119, and TypeScript got a higher score here as well at 30. And WebAssembly got a higher score, 140 versus 91. Wow, so far the Intel machine is really killing it here. I'm gonna kick this off one more time to see what happens. By the way, while this is running, we have a significant uptick in the power consumption. Just thought I'd mention it for completeness. We have uh, about 24 to 27 watts used by the MacBook and 126 used by the Intel machine. Makes sense, right? We are doing machine learning after all. By the way, I was able to get the Intel box up to 225, I believe when we did the test maxing out the processors. Check that video out if you haven't seen that. All right, the Intel box is done at 270 and the Mac Studio is at 239. So beat yet again. One more test left. It's called Motion Mark. First time I'm doing this test on this channel. Let's run that one. Ooh, fancy designs. All right, now what does Motion Mark do? Basically, it's a graphics benchmark. So this one measures the browser's capability to animate complex scenes. You can read more about it on the website and the scores are the bigger the better, of course. Wow, pretty. I don't know what it's doing, but it's got some wheels going on there. The wheels are spinning. I've never seen that many spinners on a website before. Now this just reminds me of a screensaver. Basically, it's playing a lot of screensavers. The wattage is jumping up and down. This one. So far, this test is consuming the most amount of watts. 30 watts being consumed on the Mac Studio, 143 by the Intel machine. It's doing a lot of animation of these objects here. This is an interesting test. I'm definitely seeing stuttering on both machines. This must be an intense test because we're reading 190 watts on the Intel box, 35 watts on the Mac Studio. Yeah, you may be able to even see the stuttering in the video. Okay, wow. Hey, we got a winner here, and it's the Mac Studio. The Mac Studio redeems itself with the motion mark test. There you go, there's all your results right there. You can compare it to your own tests. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a like, and subscribe to the channel for more tests like this one and other tests. I'm gonna be beating these two up and doing some more comparisons as well. Thanks for joining me today, I'll see you next time.